<clears throat> okay, welcome back. Tonight we're doing section 5.2 of Intermediate Algebra by Martin Gay, 4th edition. 5.2 is multiplying polynomials. We're going to do the even numbers up through number 16. Okay, let's start on number 2. Minus 6a times 4a. Okay, this can be minus 24a squared. Just multiply the terms together. Number 4. 7.1xy squared z to the 11 times 10xy squared z. This is going to be 71 x squared y to the 4 z to the 12. x times x is x squared. y squared times y squared is y to the 4 z to the 11 this time z is z to the 12. And this is just <coughs> a matter of adding the exponents. <coughs> When you multiply two terms that are the same together. Okay? Number six. 5x times 6x minus 4. Okay, they want us to multiply this out. <clears throat> this is enough. This is factored. Now we're going to multiply it out <clears throat> in, <clears throat> to make it longer. So we're going to multiply the 5x by each term. This is called the distributive property. This is a property of multiplication. We know this from um, basic multiplication with numbers. And here we're just going to use it with polynomials. We've already been using this all along, actually. OK, so first you multiply by the first term. That's going to be 30x squared. Multiply by the second term. That's going to be 20x. OK, and that's it. We're not going to factor out the 10 or anything else. <clears throat> We're just going to leave it <clears throat> expanded. And it, you might call this an expanded form. Minus 8y times 6xy plus 4x. OK, now I'm just going to do it. And after a while, I'll stop drawing the arrows. Minus 48xy squared minus 32xy. Okay? Ten. Minus six b squared z times z squared a plus b a z minus 3b. Okay. I just looked in here to see if I had anything to be simplified before we just multiply this through term by term. This is going to be minus 6b squared cqa minus 6bqa z squared. I'm just doing all this in my head. Plus 18b cubed times 8. Okay? I'm just adding the exponents of each of these terms in my head. Okay, and I think you can do that too. You should, that's a good example of things to, to work on that. <clears throat> Because you'll get better at it the more you practice it. 3y minus 2. Okay, this is an example now, the first example of a binomial times a binomial. Here, we can multiply the y by each of these terms. And we can also multiply the 5 by each of these terms. So basically, you're going to end up with four terms. This times each of these, and this times each of these. And this is the, 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 a, a simple way to do this, is just to remember that you have to have all four terms. 
but but in the book here they're teaching you the the foil technique and the foil it's a nice little word to remember and I think it has a lot of appeal it stands for first outer inner last so you don't want to get too confused over this there's nothing special about this it's just an, there are four terms and this is just a way of ordering them you don't have to order them this way I generally probably wouldn't order them this way, uh, but there's nothing wrong with ordering this way. This is something that you want to at least play with it. Okay, the first would be 3y. That's this times this. It could be y times 3, but I immediately in my head put the 3 first because that's conventional. That's first. Outer, what they mean by outer is the first of the first and the last of the last. That's minus 2y. Okay? Inner are these two. That's 15y. And then last are the two last ones. That's minus 10. Now we can group. Okay, uh, right off the bat I caught a mistake. This should be 3y squared. The first term of 3y times 3y, that's 3y squared. I could tell because when I started combining these, I knew that I, I should end up with a quadratic, not with a linear. Okay? So, 3y squared plus 13y minus 10. Okay, that's an expanded form. Using FOIL. Okay, here's another one. 14. a plus 2 times 3a squared minus a plus 5. Okay, now, this is a binomial times a trinomial, so FOIL does not apply here. But what does apply is you, you take the first term and you multiply it by each of these three. Then you take the second term and you multiply it by each of these three. You end up with a total of six terms, but you're going to be able to combine some of them. So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to start with this one. 3a cubed minus a squared plus 5a. That's the first term. Now I'm going to use these ones. 6a squared minus 2a plus 10. Now, we can group terms. There's a 3a cubed. The a squared terms are plus 5a squared. The a terms is plus 3a. And then there's the constant term plus 10. Okay? So, I've done it in such a way that it's in what I call a nice order. Okay, starting off with the highest power, but <clears throat> you could start off with any power. You don't have to, but that's just the way it turned out here. I like to have it in either the highest power or start off with the lowest power and have it ascending. Okay, next one is 2z minus 4 times 6z minus 2. Okay, we could do it exactly the same way as we did the previous one by putting them together with parentheses, but they're writing them in a slightly different way, and you could actually do them in a very similar way, for example, that you do long arithmetic. Uh, I'm sorry, that you do uh, that you multiply out numbers. Okay, so for example, I can do this times this, this times this, I can put them on the first line. I can do this times this and this times this, put it on the second line, then I can actually add those two up. So let me just do that. This negative four times negative two is eight, negative four z, four z times that is twenty-four z. And this time this is 12c squared. Now you'll notice that when you do it this way, the terms, the like terms will line up. So there is some logic to doing it this way. But by no means do you have to do it this way. For example, this is, I'm doing it here without, here I'm not using FOIL. I could write one after the other one and I could use FOIL, but I get the same result. So, 2x squared, this is number 18, minus 3x, minus 4, times 4x, plus 5. Okay, that's a multiplication sign, not an x. Okay. Minus 20, 
minus 15x, 10x squared, 16x, minus 12x squared, 8x cubed, minus 20x, minus 2x squared, I'm going to put a plus sign in here, just because this one ended up with a plus sign, 8x cubed, and that's the answer. Okay, now on to number 20. Seven x squared y cubed times minus three a x minus four x y plus z. Okay, three terms minus twenty one, and then here a x cubed y cubed. I just ordered them the way that I thought would look better. Minus 28, x to the third, y to the fourth, plus 7, x squared, y cubed, z. Okay? Now, in a case like this, you're not going to be able to group any of these terms. If, if none of these terms could have been grouped, after multiplying it by a monomial, none of them are going to be, the, none of them could possibly end up to be the same, because if any, two of them end up to be the same, that means that two of these would have had to have been the same. So you should check, simplify this first if possible. In this case, there's no simplification. So we go on to 22. C minus 3 times C plus 1. Okay? And I'll use FOIL. I guess I'll use FOIL. C squared, right? Outer plus c, inner minus 3c, last minus 3. That's what c squared minus 2c minus 3. Okay. Now, 2n minus 9m, n minus 7m. Okay. Now I'll do it without FOIL. I'm, I must say that I'm not a biggest fan of the world of FOIL. I don't think I was actually taught at using FOIL. So I never got in the habit of using it over and over again. I, I'm more of this kind of a guy. I would go with 2n squared minus 9n... No, I'm sorry. Minus 14n now. So in other words, I would do more like this. First I multiply the first by the second, then I do this one and this one, okay? So that's going to be minus 9mn minus, uh, let's see, plus 9 times 7, that's 63, right? Yeah, 63m squared. Now, this actually is a lot like FOIL. In fact, this gives you, this actually is FOIL. <laughs> because th this one is the first one. And this one here is, does turn out to be the outer. And then when you start here, this does turn out to be the inner. And this is the last. So, honestly, I just think about it like this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. It turns out, actually, that's exactly the same order as FOIL. But I wasn't really taught it that way. Okay. Because I prefer to, for you to think about using the distributive property and you're bound to get the correct answer. There's nothing magic, like FOIL is not a magic incantation. Okay? Okay, let's go to 24. 4y minus 1 third times 3y minus 1 eighth. Okay. No, oh, I'm sorry. In the previous one, there would have been some simplification. Did I do the simplification? Maybe I didn't. I can't remember. That would have been a mistake. They should always be simplified. So let's just do, let me just do that one, just because I think I didn't simplify it. 2n minus 9m times n minus 7m. Okay? 
2n squared minus 14nl minus 9nl plus 63m squared. What I didn't simplify this would have been minus 23mm. Okay, now this one, it's going to be 12y squared, and we're going to have minus 1 half y, then we're going to have minus y, and then we're going to have plus 1 over 24. So that's going to be 12y squared. This is going to be minus 3 halves times y plus 1 over 24. Okay, you get some fractions in there, but... There's nothing wrong with those. Okay, so let's go on to 28. Okay, you got 4x squared minus 5y squared. You have x squared minus 2y squared. Okay. Oh, did I simplify a little bit? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Now, this one's going to be 4x to the 4 minus 8 x squared y squared minus 5 x squared y squared plus 10 y to the 4. So this is going to be minus 13 x squared y squared plus 10 y to the 4th and 4 x to the 4th. And that's it. That's number 28. Okay, so let's go to number 30. x minus 5 squared. Okay, now, for x minus 5 squared, there are some special formulas that you might remember or be able to memorize and allow you to get the answer quickly. So first, let's do it the long way. x minus 5 times x minus 5. That's going to be x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. And that's going to be minus 10x plus 25 and x squared. So you have, in this case, you're going to get the first element squared. You're going to get, uh, and that's this one. You're going to get the second element squared, and that's that one, this one. And the term in the middle, you'll see the term in the middle is always twice the product of this times that, because it appears two times. So after doing this a couple times, people who are have a reasonably good memory will remember that this is going to come out to x squared minus 10x plus 25 because this is what's in here is really 2 times 5x or a negative 5x. Okay, so you double, you double the product and it allows you to write it down in one line. Okay, because you remember the formula or you might say you've memorized the formula. Okay. So that's one of the objectives of this chapter, is to point you out some formulas that are worthwhile memorizing. Now this one is called the difference of two squares. And this is quite similar. There's a simple formula for this, but first let's do it the long way. 49 x squared. Then you get minus 63 x. That's this one times this one. No, I'm sorry, this should have been plus in that example. Okay, so you get plus 63x, minus 63x, and then you get minus 81, or 9 times 9. Now, this is called, uh, when you see something that looks like this, it, and one's got a plus, and one's got a minus, you'll notice that the middle terms always, always cancel. And what you end up with is this first term squared minus the last term squared. This type of form is referred to as the difference of two squares. In other words, when you see uh, a product of two binomials, one is the sum and one is the difference of two quantities. But the net result will always be the difference of the squares. Okay, and so that's something that you memorize. And it allows you to write this down without ever putting that down. In other words, when I look at that, I can immediately tell you that that answer is going to be 49x squared minus 81 without writing ever writing down the middle terms. Okay, so let's go to 34. 
y x plus c, and then it's squared. Well, this is the squared thing. That's going to be 16x squared plus 2 times 4x times z plus z squared. And the 2 times 4 is an 8. I could have done that in my head, but I wrote it out the first time just to make it a little bit more clear. And that's supposed to be a z, so I like my z's like this. They don't do that in here, but if you don't do that, it will be very easily confused with a 2 if you're writing it out wrong. Okay. Anyway, so that's a, that's a square. That's, a, that's called a perfect square. Okay, now the next one looks like the difference of two squares. 3xy minus 2b times 3xy plus 2b. Okay, we're not going to write this out. It's going to be 9x squared y squared minus 4b squared. The difference of the two squares. The whole purpose of this chapter is to help us develop these tricks. And the difference of two squares you know, is comes in over and over and over again. Minus one third, two x plus one third, the answer is going to be four x squared, minus one nine. Okay, then we go to number 40. Number 40 is five minus three b minus three, and this is a square. Once again, this is a perfect square of, um, of the difference of two things. Okay, this is going to be this squared times this squared plus this squared, and then there's going to be twice the product of this term and this term, but one of them is a negative. So it's going to be negative the product of this term and this term. Okay? So for example, the general formula for a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. The general formula for a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. These might look like two different formulas, but this is really the same formula. Because in this case, if you never memorize the lower formula, and you just had the upper formula, if you simply replace b with a negative b, negative b times negative b is still b squared. But negative b here gives you a minus. So if you simply take the formula for the perfect square with the positive sign, you simply switch one of the signs, it's going to immediately give you the other one. There's really nothing new there. That, that's not, it's not two different formulas. Okay. So this is going to come out to 25 minus 2 times 3b minus 3 times 5 plus 3b minus 3 squared. Okay, and uh, in the spirit of this whole exercise, I'm going to expand this out. This is I'm going to first change this to minus 10. I should, could have done that in my head. Okay, so this is minus 30b, minus plus 30. Here, this is a perfect square. So I'm just going to do this perfect square. It's going to be 9b squared minus twice. This times this. Well, this times this is 9. Twice that is 18b plus 9. That's this term squared. Now, I'm going to look to cancel the like terms, such as 25, 30, and 9. Right? That's 55 plus 9 more, 64. 64. Then I'm going to take the minus 30 and the minus 18. That's minus 48b. Then I'm going to take... No, the 9b squared. Okay, that's all equivalent to that. I just got it down, I expanded it, and I combined the like terms. Okay, that was number 40. I, I think that's what they would like you to do in this chapter. Expand them out. Okay, next one is kind of a double parentheses issue. They have use brackets and parentheses. I call that double parentheses, but because the bracket is really the same as the second set of parentheses. 2y plus 5 minus 6. Okay, so this is simpler than it looks because this is actually the difference. This is going to turn out to be the difference of two squares because this is a, a sum and that's a negative. So we got 2y plus 5 squared minus 36. 
But I'm going to go, go ahead and expand this and get 4y squared okay, plus 20y plus 25 minus 36. So that's going to be 4y squared plus 20y. And this is minus 11. Okay, that's number 42. So let's go to 44. Okay, 44. Z minus Y times Z plus Y times Z squared minus Y squared. Okay, this is interesting. Well, first let's do the multiply the first two. This is going to turn out to be the difference of two squares. So this is going to be Z squared minus Y squared times Z squared minus Y squared. Okay? So that's a perfect square. That's the same as squared. Okay, and now we have a formula for doing a perfect square. That's going to be z to the 4 minus 2z squared y squared plus y to the 4. Okay, first term squared minus the product of twice the product of the first and the second, and then the last term squared. Okay, so you can see how these tricks will save you a lot of time. Okay, number 48. X plus 3. But of course, this is just a mental exercise, is to sharpen our mind on the use of polynomials. X squared plus 9. Okay, fine. Now, this is the difference of two squares. This is X squared minus 9. This, is a, this now turns out again to come out as the difference of two squares. This is going to be X squared minus 81, okay, because all those cross terms are going to cancel each other out, okay? Okay, let's go to number 50. Minus 9x y squared 3x squared minus 2x plus 10. Okay, we're just going to multiply this out. There's no simplification going on here because these I can't simplify in here. I'm just going to end up with six, with three terms. Okay, but I'm just going to go through it. 27 x cubed y squared plus 18 x squared y squared minus 90 x y squared, and there'll be no simplification because I couldn't simplify these. Okay, let's move on to 52. 4x plus 7 squared. Well, we've been doing this all day. That's just going to be 16x squared plus twice 4 times 7, or 28. Twice 28 is 56 plus 49. Okay. Here we go. That's all. That 56 is also. A 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 7 is 56. Okay. Now let's go to 54. 3x to the 4 plus 2y times 3x to the 4 minus 2y. Okay, so this is going to turn out to be the difference of two squares. 9x to the 8 minus 4y squared. Okay. Now let's go to 56. 56. 3y cubed minus 1 times 3y cubed minus 6y plus 1. Okay, this is a binomial times a trinomial. There will be some simplification at the end of the day. But we're going to have to get six terms before we can simplify it. So the first, we're just going to go through three terms and another three terms. We're going to bump, 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 bump. Okay. 9y to the 6 minus 18y to the 4 plus 3y cubed minus 3y cubed plus 6y minus 1. Okay. And we can see the terms that can be simplified. Uh, 
these two. I'm going to turn that to be something like that. This y cubed times that 1 produce a term which is the same as this one. But those are the only simplification. It turns out in this case they cancel each other exactly, so we get 9. Well, I'm just going to make it easier. And I'll just X those out and say that's the answer. Okay? I should copy it over, but that is the answer. Okay. That was 56, so let's go to 58. Four x squared plus four x minus four. Okay, now we could factor out this four before we square it. And that's going to help a little bit because uh, otherwise there's gonna be a lot of fours going around. But four times four is sixteen, we're gonna get sixteen all over the place. So we could factor this four out. This is 4 times x squared plus x minus 1, but the whole thing is squared, so it's got, this is equal to 4 squared times x squared plus x minus 1 squared. Now, that might be hard to see. See, because if I did it as, as two different steps, I'd do it like this. Squared. But when you have this squared, this is going to be 4 times 4, time, and this times itself. And that's going to be equal to 4 squared times just this squared, okay? And that's just going to make this come out a little bit easier, but it's, honestly, it's not going to make that much difference. Okay, so we're going to square this out. This is going to give us six terms. Then, um, and they're going to get, then there'll be some cancellation. Now they didn't give us a formula for this, okay, uh, for the product of a trinomial. So this is the first time we're going to do it. So I'm going to I'm going to expand it out for you, okay. This four squared, we're just going to add that in at the end. We're going to get our six terms here. Uh, three. I'm sorry. It's going to actually be nine terms, but it's going to compress down to a smaller number, possibly six. Okay. Let's go. X to the four plus x cubed minus x squared. That's the first, that's done, done, done. Now we know done, done, done. Plus x cubed plus x squared minus x. Now we're gonna go dun, dun, dun. Minus x squared minus x plus one. Now we're looking for cancellation. Okay, we got x to the fourth. We got two x cubed x squared here, can't, that one canceled that one, we end up with a minus x squared, we get minus 2x, and we get plus 1. And then we end up with 4 squared, or 16, which we could now simply throw into this. We have 16, x to the fourth, we have 16 times 2, which is 32x cubed, we get minus 16x squared, we get minus 32 times x, we get plus 16. Okay, that should be the correct answer. But there was a lot of steps in there. And uh, it wouldn't have made any difference if we left the 4 in there. We would have just multiplied 4 by itself a lot. Okay. Now, last problem is number 60. 5d minus 3 times d plus 6. Okay, so we get 5d squared plus 30d minus 3d minus 18, which is 5d squared plus 27d minus 18. Okay, and that is number 60, so that is it. That's it, we did 60 problems. And we did it in 34 minutes. Not too shabby.